PC recording has started. Thank you. So, Colin started. Thank you. And Sergeant Polite, whenever you're ready. Good morning. Welcome to the Committee on Public Safety. Will all council members and staff please turn on their videos at this time? Please place all cell phones and electronic devices on vibrate. We are ready to begin. Good morning, I am Donovan Richards of the 31st District in Queens and I am the chair of the Committee on Public Safety and let me go to, uh, let me acknowledge those who are, we're joined by today. We're joined by council members, Adams, Amprey Samuels, Brandon, Cabrera, Cohen, Deutsch, Gibson, Lanceman, Menchaca, Miller, Powers, Reynoso, Rose, and Valone. I think I got everybody. Um, today we are voting on the following legislation proposed introduction 487-A by Councilmember Gibson in relation to creating comprehensive reporting and oversight of New York City Police Department surveillance technologies, followed by proposed introduction 536-B by Councilmember Lanceman in relation to chokeholds and other such restraints, following proposed introduction 721B by Public Advocate Williams in relation to respecting the right to record police activities, Following that, proposed introduction 760-B by Councilmember Gibson in relation to an early intervention system. Following that, proposed introduction 1309-A by Councilmember Richards, which is I, in relation to requiring the police department to develop an interdisciplinary matrix. And then we're hearing, uh, we're voting on pre-considered introduction by uh, uh, Councilmember Amprey Samuels in relation to requiring visible shield numbers and rank designations. And lastly, pre-considered resolution uh, by Councilmember Rivera calling upon the United States Congress to pass and the president to sign the Eric Garner Excessive Use of Force Prevention Act of 2019, HR 4408, which would prohibit police chokeholds and other tactics that result in, uh, in asphyxiation. The path to today's vote was a long one. Many of these bills were first introduced last session. My bill was heard over a year ago. And of course, the issues underlying these bills have been decades, if not centuries, in the making. As the chair of the Public Safety Committee, which holds oversight responsibility over the NYPD, I have not quite, uh, oh, hold on. Oh, did I do? Uh, okay, I did think I did something wrong. I have not quite seen a day like this. The, uh, over the last hearing, our last hearing was something I've never experienced before. 10 hours, hundreds of witnesses, all of them angry at the NYPD. A surprising number were white allies who had recently had their first experience of police use of force. And they were angry, so angry about it that they sat through 10 hours of community of committee hearings. A lot of the anger was directed at me, at the council, at the city government at large, which many of these New Yorkers correctly believe hadn't done enough to curb police abuse that has plagued the black and brown community for years. I don't mind that anger, I get it. And while I think a lot of the criticism of those of us who have been here doing this work for years is somewhat misdirected, I will take ownership of my inability to do more. In a lot of ways, they were right. Not enough has been done. Even assuming all these bills pass, still not enough will have been done. But there's more to the story than governmental inaction. What I found interesting is that many of the people came here to rage, to, to rage did not acknowledge that every one of us is, is complicit in this failure. The main reason we were unable to change things before is because people weren't here yelling all these years. People weren't in the streets demanding change. Up until last week, people wanted more cops to keep their neighborhoods safe. I'm not trying to deflect blame. The fact that it's taken us this long to take basic steps towards disciplinary accountability and transparency in the NYPD, the fact that it took another murder of a black man on camera to pass some measures curbing the use of police force, those things are as much my fault as anyone's. As an elected official, accountability and transparency in the NYPD Oh, oh, I think I double. I uh, just give me one second. 
Um, I think I, okay, sorry. So to everyone who was here a couple of weeks ago, blaming the NYPD, blaming the mayor, blaming the council, and most of all, blaming me, I have one message. It is good to see you. It is good to hear you're angry. It means that I, as a black man who grew up and lived my whole life in what you are finally seeing with your own eyes, as an elected official who for six and a half years has been sounding the alarm into a seemingly disconnected microphone, I'm finally being heard. The injustice is finally being seen. Please don't forget that anger. Please come yell at me. I'll be right here a couple times a month for as long as it takes to make sure that we stay on this course. I'm proud of the disciplinary matrix bill. I think it's going to bring much needed transparency and accountability, but only your continued outrage can prevent the department from putting out weak punishments and having the commissioner override it half the time anyway. The NYPD must be held accountable for action for the actions of its officers for a culture that ignores and even encourages a way of treating people that is just simply unacceptable for everyone, much less a public servant. So while I'm proud of this bill and proud of my colleagues for their work, the truth is that these bills barely scratch the surface and you need to keep and we need to keep the pressure on. We have so much more work to do. Officer disciplinary records, DNA collection, gang database, facial recognition, criminalization of mental illness, criminalization of homelessness, and so much more. We need you to say that the NYPD cannot decide how we're going to police this city. And this city cannot send police to fix every single problem with a gun and handcuffs. Welcome to the struggle. Please stay angry with us. Please stay engaged. I want to thank all my colleagues today for their bills. I also want to acknowledge the people who worked on these bills for a long time. Uh, Daniel Ad Addis, I want to thank you for your work. To the speaker, thank you. Um, and to two former staff members who are not here, uh, Jordan Gibbons, who worked on the disciplinary matrix with me, to Casey Addison as well, to Tiffany Eason, to Nevin Singh, and to Brian Crow, I say thank you to each and every one of you. And with that being said, uh, I will call, uh, uh, I will go to the other sponsors of bills for remarks, go to Council Member Gibson first, followed by Gibson, Lanceman, and if uh, Public Advocate Williams is here, we'll go to him. Thank you so much and good morning, Chair Donovan Richards. Good morning to all of my colleagues on the Public Safety Committee and to all of those New Yorkers who are watching today's hearing. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I am Council Member Vanessa Gibson of District 16 in the Bronx and I thank all of you for watching our hearing this morning. Uh, this morning is a very important uh, day for our city. When the City Council takes a very bold step forward in recognizing that a sleeping nation has finally woke up following the horrific murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis. While I applaud all of the advocates, the activists, our allies, and all New Yorkers who have really stepped up, those of us who are tired of being tired and those who have simply seen far too much, I am really saddened that we have seen another black man killed by police violence in America. This morning, I am proud to sponsor the Post Act Intro 487 before this committee today, first introduced way back in 2017, which will increase the transparency and oversight of the NYPD's use of surveillance technologies and information sharing networks to keep New Yorkers safe. The POST Act will require the NYPD to develop and disclose an impact and use policy for each piece of surveillance technology that it purchases, as well as new technology purchases in the future. This policy would include information on surveillance technologies, such as the description and capabilities, the rules, the processes, guidelines, and any safeguards and security measures designed to protect the information that is collected. The impact and use policy will be sent to the council and the mayor and will be posted on the NYPD's website for 45 days after the closure of the public comment period. These measures are important safeguards, we believe, to protect the civil liberties and privacy rights of all New Yorkers in an effort to balance law enforcement and national security concerns with the need for transparency and accountability. The NYPD's powerful surveillance equipment is vast and it includes such items as stingrays, cell phone towers, license plate readers, 
x-ray vans, and even drones. What happens to this information that's gathered from innocent bystanders? How long is the data and the information kept? Is this information shared with anyone? The answer to all of these questions is very simple. We do not know. Our city has the unique opportunity at this moment in history to join other cities like San Francisco, Berkeley, Oakland, Seattle, Detroit, Cambridge, and Nashville in our collective efforts to know about and understand the surveillance tools that law enforcement uses in our communities. This legislation is the floor and not the ceiling and is a basic reporting bill to understand and really create a foundation of information on technology and surveillance that is used by the NYPD. We can respect individual civil liberties and keep our city safe at the same time. These priorities are not mutually exclusive. I wanna extend my gratitude to our former colleague, Dan Garotnik for his early support and commitment as the original sponsor of the POST Act. And certainly all credit and admiration for this moment in history to the committed and hardworking advocates who remain consistent on this long journey. They always knew that this day would come, but none of us knew exactly when. I wanna acknowledge the Brennan Center for Justice, the Surveillance Technology Oversight Project, Urban Justice Center, American Civil Liberties Union, New York Civil Liberties Union, the Legal Aid Society, the Council on American Islamic Relations, the National Lawyers Guild, the National Action Network, and Empire State Indivisible. I thank all of my colleagues who have signed on as sponsors of the POST Act, and certainly the legislative division who have worked extremely hard on this bill, and I urge my colleagues on the Public Safety Committee to vote aye. Thank you so much, Chair Richards, for the opportunity to speak on a very important piece of legislation for this moment in history. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go to now Councilmember Lanceman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning. I will have a lot more to say on the chokehold legislation that we'll be passing at the stated, at the stated. Um, but for now, let me just thank everyone uh, for their support, including in particular uh, yours, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this has been a long time uh, coming. Uh, six years now, we have waited for this legislation to, to pass. Uh, and finally, the day is here. I am hopeful, um, and even at this last moment, uh, uh, I want to be optimistic that the mayor will sign the bill into law, um, but if he doesn't, I'm confident that we have the votes to override his veto. And um, we didn't get here by accident. We got here through the sacrifice and hard work of the mothers of the movement, and in particular, uh, Gwen Carr herself, uh, Eric Garner's mom. The bill now is broader than just a chokehold bill. It includes restraints on a person's ability to breathe if an officer sits, kneels, or stands on their chest or, or back. But the origin of this legislation was the horrific killing of Eric Garner that we all witnessed with our own eyes. And having witnessed that, how can we not act? We must act. And today we are acting. So as I said, I'll have more to say on the chokehold bill uh, at the stated meeting. Um, but for now, uh, thank everyone for their support. I thank the staff their hard work over these years. And I look forward to a, a great day, not just for my bill, but for all the bills that we're passing today and the comprehensive criminal justice reform that this council is continuing, continuing to push forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, pub, is public advocate Williams here? All right, if he's not, we will go uh, to council member Amprey Samuels. Good morning, everyone. Um, and thank you so much, Chair, for all of your hard work and your voice and always speaking your truth. Um, and I really do appreciate your opening remarks. Um, yesterday, the Human Rights Council, the United Nations Human Rights Council, held an urgent debate on race-based human rights violations, systematic racism, police violence against persons of African descent, and violence against peaceful protesters within the United States and other jurisdictions. The organization called for the debate to lend meaningful outcomes, including inquiry mechanisms designed to investigate systematic racism in law enforcement globally. And on June 19th, two years ago, 
the United States announced its withdrawal from the United Nations Human Rights Council. The White House said at that time that the decision did not mean that the country would retreat from within from its stance on human rights, but we see different. And there's no wonder why we have aggressively gone backwards these past few years. And also yesterday, State Attorney General Letitia James held a public hearing with former United States Attorney General Loretta Lynch, who heard from peaceful demonstrators about their encounters with police officers. And most of them testified about not just assaults, but also the blocking of police badges. Story after story had the same experience and encounters of police hiding their badge numbers. So pre-considered intro 1962, which will require the shield number or rank designation of a uniformed officer to be visible. A private right of action would exist where an individual demonstrates that they requested that an officer make their shield number or rank designation visible and such officer did not apply. This means uniformed police officers can no longer hide or cover their badge number during the protest and allows for transparency and police accountability. Officers who have become accustomed to this practice because they knew there would be no punishment or they knew that their bosses had the discretion, this will no longer be tolerated and will now give people a right to a private action in court. Um, simply stated, when policies don't work within our agencies as a council body, we must legislate. And this bill and the accompanying pieces of legislation is a start of ensuring that when Americans pledge allegiance to the flag, that last part, that last line that states with liberty and justice for all, these bills will truly mean liberty and justice for all. Um, so thank you so much for allowing me to just speak on my bill related to the blocking of police badges. Um, and I hope that everyone is very supportive of this bill because clearly it makes sense. Um, and I'll save the rest of my comments for stated today. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you. We'll go to Councilmember Rivera. Hey, she's not here, so I'll ask the council to call the roll. Uh, is there, are there any other council members who have want to give remarks at this time? All righty, seeing none, council will ask you to call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on public safety. All items are coupled. Chair Richards. Uh, I just want to thank all my colleagues. This is, this is a lifetime struggle. Um, but these bills are certainly big steps in the right direction as we shift, you know, to ensure that there's more accountability in the police department, which only makes our, our city safer. Um, so I want to thank each and every one of you for your hard work. Uh, and I vote aye. Oh, no. Gibson. Permission to explain, Mr. Chair? Yes, please go. Okay. Uh, Councilor, permission to explain. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I thank all of my colleagues again for their support. And I wanted to also bring to your attention, I have another bill on today's agenda, intro 760B, which is known as the Early Warning Intervention System. Uh, this bill would take effect this September and will require the department to conduct an annual report and submit it both to the mayor and the speaker that will really <laughs> look at complaints received and results of investigations conducted by the CCRB uh, complaints received and conducted by the police department, uh, not limited to investigations by IAB, uh, but certainly looking at arrests and summons data, criminal arrests and investigations of an officer known to the department. Um, and I think given the reality of what we're dealing with and understanding in many of these cases, individuals and officers that are accused of excessive force, when you look at their history, they have a certain level of violations of substantiated CCRB, cases as well as lawsuits against them individually. And so we believe that a warning system would provide red flags that are necessary to identify those officers that are really in need of assistance, uh, training or other measures that we can intervene and, and look at these officers that are many of which are on patrol and in specialized units. And we can take them out of those units to really give them the help and support that they need before the lawsuits and the CCRB complaints amass and continue to grow and certainly 
what we have seen with some cases of excessive force uh, and or serious injury. So I ask my colleagues for their support of this particular legislation as well. Um, and with that, Mr. Chair and colleagues, I vote aye on all of today's agenda items. Thank you. Cabrera. Aye on all. Cohen. I vote aye. Deutsch. I'll save my comments for the stated. I vote no on all. Hmm. Lanceman. I vote aye. Menchaca. With incredible gratitude to all the staff and members and advocates and everyone on the streets right now who are making their voices heard, stay out there, stay loud. We're not done yet. I vote aye on all. Miller. I'd like to thank my colleagues for their thoughtful, insightful, and courageous uh, legislation put forth today. I vote aye on all. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote. Councilman Rodriguez, you have permission to explain your vote. Chairman Richard and former Chairman Gibson, you make a big difference in this committee. As someone that served my first four year where there was no space to talk about police reform, having both of you leading us in this work, I'm so proud of the work that you have done. Thank you to the brothers and sisters who are not black and Latino Asian, those of you who are white, who also has embraced this issue. You know, it's tough. I've been, I have, I've been, I have been arrested more than 15 times in civil disobedience. But among those, there have been four or five, two of them that I felt for my life. Being there arrested in 1989, when I was taking political science one-on-one -on -one, using my four amendments, I never thought that it would be my first uh, interaction with the police in the way that later on El Diario La Prensa wrote the editorial that said, there's no freedom on the first. Then when I was arrested when they occupied Wall Street, I won my lawsuit of $25,000. And even though my wife would like to kill me because I need every single dollar, I donated to Center for Constitutional Right because they took my case in 89. If you're not black or Latino, if you don't live in a poorest neighborhood, my brothers and sisters from the Upper West Side, Upper East Side and other area, thank you for your solidarity. You or your family will never feel what we go through. So this is a historical day. I think that with this reform, we will, attract, we will attract police officers that want to serve, keeping our community safe, getting the respect from the community, but not thinking that yes, because they had a gun, they have all the power to go around cursing or hurting people. One of my brothers was a police officer at the 42nd. I'm proud Chief Pichado. I'm proud Chief Mori, you know, when he was at the NYPD. I don't think that most police officers have bad apple, but we have few bad apple everywhere in the police departments, in government, public and private sector. So thank you, Chair. Thank you, all the colleagues. With this reform, we take New York City to be a role model nationwide. And this will not make the job of the NYPD harder. It will make a difference. They have to, re they have to adapt themselves. And those who are not ready to work in this way, they can get another job. But there's plenty in the beat where they want to serve, dress in blue, because they want to keep our community safe. And with this reform, I know that we will be the best working relationship where the community will have respect to the police and the police will respect the community. With that, I vote aye. Valone.
I don't know. Adam. So proud to have signed on to every piece of this legislation. So very proud of my colleagues, proud to be a member of this body and I proudly vote aye on all. Brandon. Brandon. Hello. Hi. Sorry. I on all. Powers. Uh, I on all. I'll save my comments for stated. Thank you to everybody who's worked very hard on these bills and to guess where we are today. I, I'm voting I on all. Thanks. By a vote of 12 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions, all items have been adopted by the committee. Thank you all. Uh, with that being said, I also want to just acknowledge in closing the work of the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus. I want to thank the co-chairs, uh, Council Member Adams, and also uh, Miller for their work as well. Uh, with that being